Hi there, I'm Steve Coffrin. I'm the founder of the Boosting Your Financial IQ podcast and platform. And what I'm gonna to do today is boost your financial IQ, especially when it comes to the income statement. So a lot of people have listened to the popular episode about understanding the income statement on my podcast, and they've asked me to put together a video explaining how to exactly look at and analyze an income statement. So that's what we're gonna jump into in this video. So get ready because we are gonna analyze the company Chipotle, which is one of my favorite places to eat. Okay, are you ready to do this? I'm gonna teach you how to read the income statement, but first, let me sing you a little song. The income statement is a flow through, always starts with revenue, cost of goods sold in SG&A, and you end up with profit at the end of the day. That's what we're gonna get into today. I'm gonna fast track your way to understanding this very important financial statement so you feel more confident when you speak the language of money. Before we get started, just remember that this is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as business, legal, or tax advice. Make sure you consult with those experts pertaining to those matters. If you wanna learn more, go to byfiq.com where you can obtain a copy of our privacy policy and terms of use. All right, let's jump in. Do you know what this is? Hmm. This right here is a bowl, a burrito bowl at Chipotle. And that's what we're going to be analyzing today. We're going to be analyzing Chipotle's income statement. And we're going to be looking at how they perform as a company. All right. Welcome to Chipotle's PL. PL stands for profit and loss. The income statement, the statement of operations, all of these terms relate to the same thing, which is the income statement. That's what we're going to get into today. So you may be wondering, what is an income statement? Simply put, it's a statement that measures the performance over a specific accounting period, which I'm going to get into in just a minute. But ultimately, it measures the revenues, expenditures, and ultimately the profit and loss of the business. So let's go through a few of the components here. First, you'll notice this is for Chipotle Mexican Grill. They are a public company. So I went and pulled these financial statements off the SEC's website, which is the Security and Exchange Commission's website. You could pull their 10K and you have access to all their financials. And that's what we're looking at here. If you'll notice, this income statement is listed in thousands. So make sure you look at how the income statement is presented and what it's denominated in. Otherwise, you're going to be super confused. Like if you look here at 2021, I'll tell you, Chipotle did a lot more in revenue than $7.4 million. This represents $7.4 billion because it's in thousands. So if it's in thousands, you're going to add three more zeros, which would make this number 7 billion, not 7 million. All right. So the income statement is over a specific period. What I mean by that is the balance sheet is as of a certain period of time. So it's like a snapshot of the company's performance at a certain period of time. But the statement of income, that is over a period of time. So this financial statement is presented between January 1st and December 31st. Some companies have a fiscal year, which is different from the calendar year. So if you're a seasonal business or you're cyclical, you may elect to have a special fiscal year. So for example, you may say, we are in the ski business. So our busy time is between July 1st and June 30th. So you may elect to have a fiscal year during that period of time. But for Chipotle and for a lot of companies out there, their annual financial statements will follow the calendar year. So these columns right here represent performance between January 1st and December 31st. Now this is the 10K. This is an annual report that they're required to file. Companies also have to file 10Qs, public companies that is. If you're a private company, you can do whatever you want. But for public companies, 10Qs are their quarterly financials. 10Ks represent their annual financial statements. If you're an international company, your annual report is often referred to as the 20F. So just a, a few little tidbits there. Now the income statement, this is broken down in columns right here, 2021, 2020, and 2019. We have a three-year comparison. Remember my song at the beginning, it probably hurt your ears, but remember, I'm gonna sing it for you again here so it sticks. The income statement is a flow through, always starts with revenue, your cost of goods sold down to your SG&A, and you end up with profit right down here or net income at the end of the day. When I say flow through, what I mean is that all these numbers flow through the income statement down to net income, and then the net income carries over to the balance sheet and the statement of cash flows starts with net income from the income statement. So that's why I say it's a flow through statement. 
So starting with the very top, revenue. Revenue is also known as sales. So when a company sells its products or services to its end users, it recognizes revenue. Revenue, sales, same thing. This is also known as the top line. So oftentimes you'll hear that in organizations when they're talking about financials. They'll say, what does our top line look like? What they're referring to is what does revenue look like? So this is the top line, revenue right here. Now, underneath revenue, you have certain costs pertaining to delivering, producing or delivering those products and services. These are called cost of goods sold or cost of revenue. Now, publicly traded companies, they have to present their financial statements according to GAAP, right? Generally accepted accounting principles or IFRS, which is international financial reporting standards, depending on whether you're a domestic or international company. And there's certain standards of how you present your income statement. But some companies, they have a different way to present the data here. So not always will you see cost of goods sold broken out on a company's 10K. But if you're a private company, or if you looked at the detail behind all this, remember, this is the summarized level that they're required to submit. They're going to show their cost of revenue or their cost of goods sold. Now, remember, cost of goods sold, those are your costs related to producing or delivering your products and services to customers. So for Chipotle, you have the product costs, which includes the meat, the tortillas, the rice, the beans, the pico, the cheese, the guacamole. I love the guacamole. All those things right there, those are product costs, direct costs. Those are costs of goods sold. You have the direct labor, the people that are preparing and then ultimately delivering the food to you. Those are direct costs that belong up in cost of goods sold. You may have equipment in the business. Now, the equipment costs themselves are recorded on the balance sheet as assets, but the maintenance of that equipment, if, the, if it breaks down and you have repairs that don't need to be capitalized, those are recorded and cost of goods sold. So basically any cost associated with delivering the product or service to the customer is recorded there. Cost of goods sold, cost of revenue, it's broken down in that line item here. So you have food and beverage packaging, you have the direct labor cost, occupancy cost, and other operating costs, all are related to the cost of revenue, cost of goods sold. Underneath that line item, you have what is referred to as GNA or SGNA selling general and administrative expenses, or just GNA, general and administrative expenses, or it's known as overhead or fixed costs, all these synonyms, right? Just to confuse you. But at the end of the day, what GNA expenses or SGNA expenses represent is the overhead of the company, the overhead cost. So you have like building rent, the utilities, you have office salaries and general administrative payroll, Anything related to the fixed cost of the business are going to end up in G and A here. Okay. And some companies will list out their selling general administrative expenses. That's why I say S G and A. Below general administrative expenses, you have depreciation and amortization. So if a company buys a piece of equipment, let's just say they buy um, a, a grill. Now the grill may cost five thousand dollars. Since the grill lasts more than one year. The company can't just take that grill, the cost of the grill, and expense it on the income statement in one lump sum amount. So instead, what they need to do is they need to depreciate it over a period of time. Now, the IRS and GAAP, they both have guidelines for how depreciation works and over what period of time you can depreciate these assets. So for this example, let's just say the grill is going to last uh, five years. It costs $5,000. It's going to last five years. Every year, the company is going to record $1,000. $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000. They're going to depreciate that over five years and record $1,000 a year on the income statement. I'll talk more about depreciation and amortization and how fixed assets work in my next video about the balance sheet. But for now, just understand that's what depreciation and amortization is. Depreciation is for tangible assets, things that like plant, property, and equipment, things that are tangible, things that you could feel, you could touch. Amortization is for intangible assets like patents, customer lists, or other things that a company is able to amortize over a period of time. Now, Chipotle, they have this line item called pre-opening costs. So these are other costs related to the business, operating the business, impairment and closure costs. They separate these out from G&A because they don't want to put this in the number here because that's going to skew the financial picture of the company because these are more like one-off costs, pre-opening costs and impairment costs. 
but ultimately they end up with operating expenses, total operating expenses here. And then you take your revenue, subtract out your operating expenses, and you end up with income from operations. Okay. This is your operating income. So Chipotle is in the business of making burritos and quesadillas and burrito bowls and salads. That's their core business. Now there are other items, other income and expense related items, not associated with the normal operations of the business that shows up right here, interest and other income. Okay. So they earn interest on cash or other assets they, that they have but that's not the normal part of their business. So they're going to record that revenue, that income down here. Then they, they come here and they add these two things. They have income from operations. They have other income, end up with income before income taxes. They account for those income taxes here on the income statement, subtract that out. And ultimately they end up with net income. All right. So that's the income statement. It starts with revenue. You record your cost of goods sold or your cost of revenue. You take out your selling general and administrative expenses, AKA your overhead. Okay. Take out your other expenses related to operations. You end up with operating profit. Account for your other income and expense. That will give you your income before income taxes. You have to pay income taxes, unfortunately, right? So you subtract that out. You end up with net income. This number is going to carry over to the balance sheet and it's going to be recorded in the equity section of the balance sheet. And on the statement of cash flows, this is going to be the first line item that you typically see. So that's why you need to check out those other videos so you can see how all these three financial statements flow together. Here's just a really quick tip for you. If you get an income statement like this, what you're going to want to do is express these columns as a percentage of revenue. So I will do that for you. So we'll just say percentage of revenue. Oops. Percentage of rev. And I, what I'm going to do is I want to show each of these line items as a percentage of revenue so I can common size this financial statement and I can understand how things are trending year over year. So I'm just going to go, this equals right here, this equals total revenue. Total revenue is going to be my denominator. I'm going to lock that. I'll copy that and I'll copy this all the way down here. And then I'll come in here. I'll format this as a percentage. One decimal point is fine. All right. And I can do the same thing for the other years. Okay, so I'm going to just come here and if I unlocked my formula, what I should have done here is unlock this and this equals, let me just do this again. This equals this divided by this. I'm going to lock it on 11, but I'm not going to lock it on the column right there. Copy this, copy this down right there. Oops, went a little too far, got a little too crazy. Copy this, copy this, expand that, add a column right here. Bam, bam, bam. Copy this, copy this down. All I'm doing is hitting control D, control C, control V, and then I control D that all the way down. All right, now I have everything expressed as a percentage of revenue year over year. So what you'll have now is a better year over year comparison. So if you wanna analyze this financial statement really quickly, express it as a percentage of revenue and then look at each line item to understand how things are trending. So for food, beverage and packaging costs, you can see in 2019 is 33% of revenue, which means that every single dollar that came into the business, 33 cents went to food, beverage and packaging costs. Now the business has been able to improve their performance and that cost has been lowered by two and a half cents roughly here from 33.1 to 30.6. So good job Chipotle. Their labor costs has also been trending down as a percentage of revenue. So once again, you could go through each of these line items and see how things are comparing year over year. Ultimately, their net income is 8.7%. So every dollar that Chipotle does in business that they bring in in revenue, 
they earn 8.7 cents, which is good, you know, which is good compared to these other years. 2019 is 6.3, 5.9 in 2020. Maybe COVID had an impact on that. And then 8.7% in 2021. So that's the income statement. That's how it flows. Remember, the income statement is a flow through, always starts with revenue, cost of goods sold, and SG&A, and then you end up with profit at the end of the day. And remember, the income statement is organized first by operating income, which is all these things pertaining to the normal operations of the business. And then you account for other income and expense, and then end up with that number before taxes, take out taxes, and then bam, net income. There you have it. See, the income statement isn't super intimidating. You got this. You can read this. If you want to dive deeper into how to read financial statements, I have a full course on that at byfiq.com called Understanding Financial Statements. But for now, I hope this built your confidence and you feel more comfortable with reading an income statement. If I got you all excited about financial statements and learning the language of money, you can go to byfiq.com. You can join the community for free. There's tons of resources that come with that membership. Also, there's the podcast. Be sure to tune into that. That's a great way to learn about financials while you're on the go. We also have programs and courses that you may want to check out as well. So be sure to follow us on social media. There's the website. There's some more resources for you. Keep going on this journey. Learning the language of money is going to give you so much power in your career, personal life, and in your business. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got value out of it, hit that like button for me. Leave your comments below and also subscribe to this channel so you get notified when we drop more videos just like this. In the meantime, take care and be sure to check out byfiq.com to learn more about the cool resources that we have. And I'd love for you to join our free community.